<laughs> She's the vampire in love with the werewolf. Candace Akala plays Caroline Forbes. He's the good boy turned bad boy turned good boy, I think. Paul Wesley plays Stefan Salvatore. <laughs> She's the evil genius who keeps it all straight. Julie Plack, executive producer. He's the bad boy who finally got to kiss the girl. Ian Summerholder. <laughs> She's the girl who's causing all of this trouble. Nina Dobra plays Elena Gilbert. He's the vampire hunter who's got some splaining to do. Matt Davis plays Alaric Saltzman. And she's the witchiest of them all. Cat Graham plays Bonnie Bennett. about the originals. I figured they're not here tonight. It's a little safe to talk we about We can say them. whatever we want about them. Exactly. Talk we're safe. We're, safe right? we're no one's going to tell them, right? Just talk shit about the originals. Exactly. <laughs> Have we seen the last of them? No. 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 It's, why, it's why all of us constantly live in the precipice of death. <laughs> and that's why we love you all so much. <laughs> Something like that. So Ian, still... <laughs> so Candace, is Klaus still, you know, hanging around? Klaus still hanging around out there? <laughs> the way you put that. Well, what's so funny is that I, I, everyone's so excited about this Claire line, but Klaus is is bad. Like he's a mass murderer. <laughs> like his hobbies are but he's turning got a hard, hybrids got a to murder people. I mean that he's is a terrible Match.com profile. <laughs> <laughs> so like what, you know, Colin, mom, I met this great guy. He likes to murder people sometimes, but other than that, he's a real Do you think Klaus has a Match.com profile? <laughs> that, <laughs> I feel like Klaus it's a serious actually, possibility. Klaus actually owns Match.com. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he started it. It'd be great if like season four we had like little tidbits of like Oh, one episode we just like reveal the match.com episode. Wow. <laughs> like, well, like just a random segue. The product integration episode. Right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Let me check my match.com profile. Let Wait. me <laughs> let me bang match.com. <laughs> yeah. And, uh... So um but uh, uh Klaus and uh K I just love that their whole relation or whatever relationship there is is all based on manipulation on both of their parts. So uh Aren't all relationships based on <laughs> <laughs> For sure. <laughs> Maybe yours. Especially mine yeah. and yours, buddy. <laughs> that was a definitive <laughs> joke. <laughs> Help me. <laughs> Ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of truth to every joke. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. So about Damon and Rebecca, speaking of originals. So, yeah, exactly. So, Damon. Oh. Oh. <laughs> She's reading my cards, really. <laughs> so let's talk about Rebecca then. <clears throat> <laughs> let's not. <laughs> well, you see, you know, the problem is I saw this picture online where she was torturing you. So what's going on with Rebecca? It's like every woman in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not touching that one. <laughs> uh, um. Yeah. Um. <laughs> There's nothing better than uh, being hung from the ceiling of a Vanderbilt <laughs> house. <laughs> Tortured, <laughs> whipped, gaffed, bleeding <laughs> by another woman. <laughs> um, they have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> 
You're like, why is he being hung? Yeah, in why, a what is going on? Yeah, why don't you I describe the photo? We were shooting it. We, we were, were shooting, shooting in We were Holyfield. shooting in <laughs> Evander Holyfield's house, which is about <laughs> 45 <laughs> times the size of this room. It's huge. Massive. It has a ballroom. It has a ballroom. It has a bowling alley. Bowling alley. Bowling alley. Bowling alley. And, bowling alley. I mean, it's. Yeah. Just, and and he was literally walking Squash. back and forth, like throughout the house while we were shooting, right? So. Yeah, and <laughs> you're sitting there, and you sort of walk through this, you know, open this door, and you. He's gonna be really pissed off that we're talking <laughs> about his house. You know? No, he's not. Like we went in it's this like cool room. out there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. If you own a house that cool, you want people. If you own a house that cool, you want people to know you have a bowling alley in your house. Hey, listen. One of the coolest things in the world is to show up at work and Evander Holyfield is there. That is just awesome. Actually, it's not because if you like step on the carpet and you're like, and he hits like a right hook, knocks you out, then the makeup is awful. It takes a lot of time. No, you know that scene or that particular image is one where. I think there's an amazing bonding moment for both Elena and Damon and for Stefan and Damon by virtue of the fact that some pretty gnarly stuff, uh, you know, as demented as you think Damon could have been in season one or the, you know, the capabilities of Stefan to have been as evil as he was in his past, these originals uh, have an appetite for destruction <laughs> and they act on it. They have a soft side. Elijah, he's got a little soft. Well, soft side. Yeah. He's, so, he's so cute. He yeah. draws pictures of horses. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 nice touch. Klaus grows orchids. Did you read that on his match.com profile? No. <laughs> I was in his apartment for a dinner party. Okay. Leave it there. <laughs> Say no more. <laughs> that I found out on Match.com. <laughs> um, but no, that, that image is uh, one that was very, very intense. Damon does something really crappy to Rebecca in the next episode after this, and she gets mad and decides to rip him <laughs> apart and, and stab him up and make him bleed. It's kind of gnarly. Remember the scene, what was it? Was it Klaus that made um, Catherine uh, stab, remember, herself stab herself in the leg? Repeatedly. In the leg? Until he came home. Alara Klaus. Alara Klaus. Alara Klaus. Alara Klaus. Klaus. That was you. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> Catherine, yeah. Just repeatedly stab herself in the leg. Well, Rebecca decides that it's fun to slice and dice. Hell hath uh, no fury. Like a woman scorned. It's true. It's true. Boys, let me tell you. <laughs> Especially after this panel. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Julie, what about Esther and the rest of the clan? Will we be seeing them come back? Um, um, <laughs> yes. Yes. That was an interesting Maybe. Note. <laughs> Sorry. Mm -hmm. There's a sound of music coming. There's, there's, <laughs> there's the what has aired versus what have we You could always see people in flashbacks. Oh, yeah. Yes. yes. Right. Well, no, look, I mean, uh, this is not the last we've seen. Episode 15, which aired before the hiatus, is not the last we've seen of the originals. Um, or of the mother's plan to try to take out her children. So there's still a whole other chapter of that story. It's to like tell. instead of the brother's grim, it's the mother's grim. The mother is grim, <laughs> yes. <laughs> what do you come up with this? I don't know. The most ridiculous there are no cards back there. Well, the the brother's grim. There's no cute card. <laughs> it's the mother's grim. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Playing that for a while. Do you see what I have to deal with on a daily frickin' Oh, do you see what I have to deal with? <laughs> I feel a need for an intervention down there. Please. <laughs> no, no, let it go on. Boys, 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 <laughs> for God's See, sake. we're always in between an amazing woman. Aww. <laughs> that wants to kill us. <laughs> and Nina. <laughs> <laughs> Elena seems to have developed a soft side for Elijah. Why is that? Why does she see? Oh. I know. Yeah, He's I don't. He's so pretty. <laughs> <laughs> He's not bad looking. Um, he, this is I'm true. I'm sure you'd all agree. But he, um, I think because they share similar morals and they sort of, he doesn't want to hurt people 
for the most part. Um, and <laughs> for the most, <laughs> the most part. part. <laughs> what does that mean exactly? Well, because he, I don't know. I mean, spiritually speaking, yeah, he does not want to hurt anybody. He's honorable. He's got honor. Yeah. Exactly. He does. Yeah. Thanks. And to a certain extent. So I think <laughs> that they bonded over that, and they share that mutual respect for each other. And um, she sees a lot of herself in him, and vice versa. And and they have like a chemistry or something, and that I think I think. I don't know, we'll, we'll see. Is there an Elijah Elena makeout scene coming? <laughs> <laughs> He's squared. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Ooh, Wait is a it, would that be their fan Ooh. name? No, I think Elijah has to get in line behind Alara. Thank you. And, yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't anyone ever see that movie, The Guardian? <laughs> they made out. By the way, I do not advocate this whatsoever, but, but <laughs> Matt Davis has taken to Twitter to, uh, to <laughs> begin the Alara Kalena campaign. <laughs> campaign. You really that was actually on my list of questions. Totally unacceptable. And, <laughs> and, yet, and inappropriate <laughs> for the guard. Yeah. I don't but know. yet fantastic. Well, <laughs> <laughs> and when the ratings slip. <laughs> So Matt, Ow. I'm talking this. Elijah where, where did, Damon. Where did this come from? <laughs> <laughs> Who's bad? I'm bad. No. Oh, oh no. What are we talking? about? He's asking Matt about his fan fiction. I'm sorry. Right. Hey, let's talk about this fan fiction of yours. No, oh, no. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> oh no. No, let's do. Let's talk about. Oh God, no. <laughs> I'll get off that easy. Fan fiction. <laughs> Bam. No, I won't talk about the fan. It's totally inappropriate. Oh, but it is inappropriate. No, it's What's actually... What's your favorite one? <laughs> I have two. Uh, <laughs> if, you know, uh, if we're being honest about it. Uh, we are. There's one I won't mention because it's actually, like, R-rated. But Truly the other one is, um, is there's a moment where Alaric is talking to Damon. This is written as written by Matt Davis, by the way. Alaric is literally on an iPhone while I'm like in a scene with him. Um, about why Damon loves Elena when Elena, as a young girl, doesn't even know who John Lennon is, and uh, <laughs> and it's it's actually I mean it's a nice he says to he says to Damon why don't you just wait that, a little man why don't you wait and let her grow up and have a life and become an adult and learn about things like John Lennon and life and deep stuff. And, uh, <laughs> and Alaric like gives Damon a little, you know, life lesson in philosophy and stuff, and you know, it's it's nice. It's not going to happen this season, but it's nice. <laughs> <laughs> so it's really no different than the conversations that Matt Davis and I have in the halls of our production office. That's true. That's true. And maybe he's maybe uh, like, who's your muse, Matt? Well, right now it's been Tyler. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have enjoyed making him do some twisted things. <laughs> <laughs> this has been fun. And I, and I, and I like the, the chase between. That, uh, that's the one we're not going to talk oh, about. That's that one. Yeah, we can't talk about it. <laughs> oh, that one, yeah. That one's amazing. That's fantastic. Oh. I thought it was. <laughs> <laughs> I was dying. Yeah. Why can't we talk about Man. it? Yeah. Uh, okay. That's like, wait, that's like just going to a restaurant and saying, oh my gosh, this could be the menu, but this is what we're serving you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Put it, Don't do put that it this way. Me. Put it this way. There's like the there's like the fan fiction universe of you know young fans writing young, beautiful, sweet, innocent elements <laughs> of the story, and then there's the Matt Davis fan fiction then, universe. And then there's well, this. Which, is, oh. be told, that was which should not be live streamed. That was I've read. It's all smutty. I think that one was meant bad. to be a funnier die skit, which is why it was going to be really <laughs> inappropriate and like out of. That wasn't. Uh, yeah. To, that wasn't supposed to be real. I thought the one we weren't going to talk about was where I. <laughs> Where I made clouds. This is like your dream come true. <laughs> like all you ever wished for in life. You Live see what's going on. Yeah. It's true. Like, Next uh, question. <laughs> all right, carry on. Speaking. What? What? What was that? Secret. Don't make friends. Secret. It's not a secret. It's on his Twitter account. Oh, it's not Go a secret. Go look up his Twitter He's account. Go on to Twitter. Yeah. yeah, it's so easy. Just go on Twitter. <laughs> At Ernesto Ryan. At Ernesto Ryan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, and moving on. <laughs> moving on. <laughs> so moving we on. haven't heard from Catherine in a while. That seems to worry me. <laughs> when will we, is she? What is she up to? When will we see? When will we see Catherine again? Um, when will we well, see Catherine again? Look, I mean, Catherine spent 500 years running from a class 
to great success. Um, if Klaus is in Mystic Falls, if that girl gets anywhere near Mystic Falls, she's dumb. <laughs> she's dumb. Yeah, 500 years. There's no love story that is more important than Catherine and her own self-interest and freedom. So whatever she feels about either of these boys, she is going to stay the hell out of Dodge. Self-preservation. Uh, yeah. Something until, we, we know nothing about. Yeah, these two suckers yeah. are like, oh, let's save the yeah. girl. We're going to get the girl. <laughs> <laughs> Can I get that Arnesa Raleigh sign back, please? Just so Matt Davis. It's right there. <laughs> there you go. So we can feed Matt. And we can back to Arnesa Riley. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There you go. So we can spoon feed Arnesa Riley that he really is awesome. Okay. <laughs> By the way, you'll never get that on the iPhone. The Zoom. <laughs> you know what, Paul? Never underestimate the yeah, power of the true. iPhone. <laughs> Cash, cash from Apple. <laughs> Endorsement right there. I wish. <laughs> Apple wish. All right, Kat. I'm, so I'm very, I'm very worried about Bonnie's friendship with Elena. Are you? And we are. Is she ever going to be able to forgive her? I, I mean. Pregnant oh. pause. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I think that they have a great relationship, and they've always had a great bond, and they grew up together, and that's her rock. You know, I don't think that she really believes that Elena did anything to sabotage her relationship with her mother. You know, I, I'm sure that she's gonna eventually have to work through whatever she's dealing with. I'm a little hot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you are. No! Yeah. Yeah. We can't do that in public. You might be hot. Uh, but this she one is freezing. Mm -hmm. There you uh. go. This one is like freezing and you're on fire. No, I mean, so, my mic is hot, my mic is hot. Oh, the mic is hot. Oh. My mic is hot. Sorry. No, I'm that's okay about you. that. Again, you're sure. <laughs> oh, uh, all right, Paul, here. Uh, I forgot, Paul, we're not at home. <laughs> How will she deal with her mother becoming a vampire? In time, you know. Uh, You'll definitely see a lot of stuff with Caroline and Bonnie working together, which I thought was really, really cool. Yay, girlfriends! Yay. Girls can actually be friends and like each other and yeah. not want to scratch each other's That's eyes out. That's just TV. Yeah. <laughs> oh. That's really cool. And, you know, it's not going to be easy for her, but... I think it's your earrings. You it's think? Like a, it's like a... <laughs> no. You could kill Caroline with so. earrings. I don't think so. No, I would never. That would be hot. <laughs> That's a little ghetto, being like Bonnie taking out her earrings. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think we need to go there. Like, that's, you know what I mean? Like... <laughs> that's awesome. You guys have heard that, right? <laughs> so, Paul, I how, love much, this group of how much fun was it having your wife on this cast this season? Oh. <laughs> How'd she get the part? <clears throat> <laughs> uh, how'd she get the part? Julie, how'd she get the part? I don't kiss and tell. I mean, I don't. <laughs> no, I mean, she had to, you know, she had to audition, and, and she had to, to uh, Julie's a fan of uh, Pretty Little Liars. <laughs> right? Yep. Yeah. So, you know, it just kind of worked out. Two okay. words. Casting couch. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're, uh, she... no, she's yes. amazing. <laughs> Actually, Sorry. by the way. <laughs> Wait, what? By the yeah, way, I'm sorry, but it's true. <laughs> what? Casting couch. Casting what does that mean? I don't know. What do you think Come it means? Come on, Paul. How long have you been How did you find that? You've <laughs> never heard of the casting couch? No, what is that? <laughs> or do you want to show me later? <laughs> you know what, buddy? You don't know what so that messy. is, and I can't show you anything. The, shirt, the no, shirt's yes, coming off again. This the shirt's okay. coming off. I feel like this is Take turning into one of Ernesto Riley's stories. <laughs> That's, yeah, fan fiction. You're anyway. I know, this is some fan fiction going on right now. <laughs> it's, it's been great. It's been great. great. Um, but, you know, Matt got to work with her a little bit more than you did. What's going on here? What is it? <laughs> I always ask her, on how, how is it that, you know, when you're, you know, because I've done scenes with her and she's amazing. Great. Better than Paul, actually. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think I learned my, my, my moves. My yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> How do I turn? Do I turn to the left or to the right? You, you learn it from Tori. Yeah. But um, I know that 
and I say this because it's very difficult to embarrass Matt Davis, but I'm gonna go out on a limb. <laughs> no. Oh. Don't embarrass me. <laughs> when, oh, right. when, when, when Tori, when, you know, there was this love interest that was coming for Alaric and Matt Davis was psyched, like, yeah, this is gonna be really cool, man. Gonna have some, like, Alaric's gonna just get some, it's gonna be really cool. <laughs> and then it shows up and it's his buddy's wife. <laughs> <laughs> then all of a sudden, Matt Davis is horrified. <laughs> well, I mean, like, he's horrified. <laughs> What if, what if, like, yeah, what, man. <laughs> what are you talking about, man? What if they make, what if, like, what if they make out with her? I was like, well, you just gotta go for All it. All right, this conversation is <laughs> <laughs> ridiculous. Oh. Answer my questions for me. <laughs> <laughs> my behalf, please. Oh. Moving on. Here's a question for you How much fun did you have playing Bad Stefan? That's a good thing. Uh, that's a good question. <laughs> like, I like that transition. <laughs> No, good segue. Um, no, it's, <laughs> Ryan. Good segue. it's uh, no, no, no. I mean, obviously, you know, I, I tell Julie all the time, you know, like I, that season three, the first sort of, uh, you know, ten episodes or whatever, when we got to really explore Stefan's dark side, was just the most fun I had in a while. You know, it's just, it's just, and I really want to maintain that. But Julie's, I don't know. I mean, he's starting to get. What is this? <laughs> I watched this episode, and he's all like, I don't want to kill innocent. He's a little. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do it anymore. This weird tapping thing. Every scene that we anymore. shot in this episode, Paul was doing this. <laughs> but it was in the script. What's going on, Julie? Yeah. Yeah, it's a journey. It is. It's, it's a, a journey. It's a journey. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, Paul, Paul, the other day, he's like, I was nice in this episode, in this scene that, that you guys just wrote. I'm like, yes, you were, sir. And he goes, do I have to be nice? I'm like, yes, you do. Absolutely. <laughs> right now, you do. Um, you know, it is a, Stefan's on a journey uh, of... The beauty of Stefan and Damon is that both of them, though one began the show as a hero and one began the show as a villain, is that in their core they both have sides that are as dark and as light um, that, that really fight against each other. And then when, in the, when you add the vampire context into it, it's a constant battle for both of them. For Damon, it's battling against the parts of him that want to be pure and good. And for Stefan, it's battling against that sort of demon inside of him that wants to take over. So they're on the, they're, the brothers are sharing a journey. It's just manifesting itself. Is Stefan ever going to have like a medium, like a sort of a... Well, I think he's got to. I mean, I don't think that the Stefan that we met now going, having gone through everything and knowing what he knows now can ever be right. just, oh, I'm so good and honest and pure and everything. I mean, I mean, like, is he, yeah, still, he's is he still, still eating bunnies? He's still, no, he he's, <laughs> he's still Stefan at his core. He's still strong and loyal and full of love and full of light, but he's got a terrible darkness that haunts yeah. him and it's always going to haunt him. And so now it's about, you know, the, the, path to moderation or whatever, it's, it's about Stefan finding that balance inside him so he can both be a man and a hero and, and love someone and be loved, but also function as a vampire because it's not, you know, he, he can't get out of that. He's stuck with that, so. So true. And you no, know what? It's true. I, That's why I do she's love the creator, executive <laughs> producer, and writer. I do, yeah. I do love that inner turmoil I obviously love playing the dark side. It's more fun. For an actor, it just is, you know? It's just more fun. But that turmoil, that's what creates, that's what makes Stefan dynamic, you know? And I, and I, and, and I feel like that, that's what, uh, I enjoy going to work every day because I get to explore both sides. I'd get sick of one or the other if it was full time, you know what I mean? And there's not a lot of traffic. What? <laughs> what? Wait, what? Did I say something? I say something. <laughs> <laughs> you say traffic? I think, I think, you know, people talk about Damon all the time, too. Like, oh, Damon's become <laughs> such a hero, and he's, he's so good. Damon's no more good than Stefan is evil. They are they both have equal, struggling. They have equal with, components. Have. Yeah, I mean, they're... Oh, dear. <laughs> don't, hey. don't hate tweet me for that. <laughs> hate tweeting. No, I think that they're, I mean, they, as Paul, I think, will agree, they, equal, they have equal capabilities of good and evil. I mean, that, that's the whole push and the pull of the whole We're like soulmates. <laughs> 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 just, 
Maybe they're more soulmates than Elena. They are soulmates. Well, look, I've said this a million times, the brother relationship, and this episode, one of the reasons why I like it is because it's a real showcase for Team Salvatore, as I, as I call it. It's, you know, that is the love story. Team Salvatore. <laughs> Ring power. <laughs> Right? <laughs> Blow it up! <laughs> oh. But you're right, I think... <laughs> I, I, you know, I tried to steal my ring from props this weekend to bring for you guys, but they caught me. <laughs> I did it for people's choice, uh, and our prop master was... Did you give one away? No, 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 I oh brought it with me. God. I left set with it. <laughs> <laughs> that was such a genuine reaction. Yeah. <laughs> what? As my boss, no, I did not give it away, uh, but I did take it from set one day. We wear the same ring. He just, he we only have like one of those rings. It's the weirdest thing. We only have like one. You, oh, Paul. Sorry. You would think we'd have multiples. That's our like, really so nicely expensive. made rings. Yeah. yeah. When the show's done, it's all over. Those, Those are going to me. They're going, they're going to <laughs> Not the guys that wore them for six years. No. <laughs> the woman that really wrote about them for six years. <laughs> his ring, on the other hand. Oh, oh sorry. Wait, I forget. His no ring. <laughs> I still oh, want it. Oh, though. Lord. Okay, never mind. We're not talking about that. I know. We're not talking about that. Well, I have a problem with all these rings. Because we walk around all day. We, You know, we all share this love for each other and we, you know, bump wrists and fists, you know, hey, yeah, good scene, good scene, good scene. Slap There's a problem with that. We do slap a lot of, we slap a lot of butts. That's like a football team, good game. You know. <laughs> See you in the showers. Uh. <laughs> but these rings are big and cumbersome and they hurt. And Matt Davis, when he goes, yeah, good scene. <laughs> <laughs> it hurts, that's all I'm saying. I'm sorry. Man. My, my manicurist does not appreciate it. <laughs> By the way, he's dead serious. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> so wrong. So, but so yeah, right. So, right. <laughs> so let's talk about the love triangle. Oh. Oh. So, Julie, in a recent interview, you said it's definitely going to come to a head by the end of the season. Is it? Really? <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you read these articles. I, that's what they came before. It's going to come to a head, yes. Maybe not the head, but a head for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Again, now, ladies and gentlemen, Julie and now Fleck. I'm, now I'm like, how <laughs> Let's see, you, let's see you talk yourself out of I this might, one, I Julie. might be <laughs> blushing now suddenly under all these lights. Um, no, I mean, look, here's the thing. Here's where we are. We had a beautiful love story between Stefan and Elena. Uh, we had an, a burgeoning and evolving friendship and contentious friendship and then possible romantic relationship between Damon and Elena that was born out of... <laughs> that was born out oh. of... <laughs> a shared desire for each of them to help this person, Stefan, who's so important to them. Damon wants to help his brother. Elena wants to rescue Stefan. And in Stefan's absence, and then subsequent, like, awful Bony behavior. Phony baloney, he had intention. Come they on. Got, they got closer. An agenda. Oh, he wanted to get in her pants That's from day one. That's what I'm Who wouldn't? For the lovely Elena. In her pure soul, Chase. Duh. Pure soul. <laughs> um, you know, it's, it's, all part of, it's all part of growing up. It's all part of the journey of growing up, and what we'll see before the end of the season is Elena having to ask herself a lot of questions about who, who do I care for, what do both of these men mean for okay. me. And I think I she needs to go here's, abroad here's and go question. to Europe and meet some new boys. Yeah. Yes. 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 Bye-bye, yes. Salvatore. Yes. Why not? Yes. Yes. I, yes. She's right, by the way. She's yes. right. I have a and very... In Italy, I'm sure there's a lot more Salvatores. There are a lot... <laughs> Except, right. it's, except it's Salvatore. Yeah. <laughs> that, they won't that, bite her or kill her and all of her loved ones. That raises a real, that raises a real question. We did the Europe like, episode. Gossip Girl did it. <laughs> Gossip Girl did a Europe episode? Yeah, they, yeah, they shot in Paris. What? They did? No yes. Way. Gossip Girl shot in Paris? Yes. They shot in Paris. 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 That's that. That's all I'm saying. And one tree hill in 
the Bahamas, Bahamas and there. they went skiing. What is this? No, they did not. They what went to not go to the Bahamas. They or they went to they some did? beach location. Well, maybe like North the French Carolina. version of Salvatore is like, <laughs> like Salvatore. You know what I mean? <laughs> really? No, I mean. No, we don't raises, want to do what Gossip Girl did. It raises. They went to France. We should go to Italy. Oh, for God's sake. So Julie, totally different. I was totally different. So Nina's gonna write her fanfic. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So is there any chance she would end up with someone other than a Salvatore brother? Hopefully for well. her. <laughs> I'm not saying, I'm just <laughs> saying. There is a reason, <clears throat> there is a reason that we've set the seating order is the way it is tonight, is very carefully designed. Damon okay. ends up with Julie. The evolution of the love <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Okay. <laughs> Oh, wait a minute. Whoa. Oh. Oh. I like where this is going. <laughs> um, I, 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 honestly, I think if I even tried to answer that question, I would be just, it would be a really dumb answer. So I'm just going to let it be and say, <laughs> this season, maybe she has a choice to make. Okay. I would really like to know what that <laughs> Will everyone survive the season? But then would anyone watch if she <laughs> made the choice? No one would watch next season. I know. No one watches now. <laughs> That's not true. That's true. That was that a joke. Not That's not no joking. one. Joking. Make it up to them. Take your shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Candace. I don't feel like Candace is thinking. I thought, I thought you meant pants. <laughs> I got confused. That was blushing. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm going to try to get control, but I don't know. I'm, I'm blushing. I do that every I week on the show, this babe. This is a prestigious <laughs> television event. I know. I know. We are at the Paisley Center. Fan I know. Prestigious yeah. honor. They're never going to invite us here again, by the way. <laughs> they are if you get naked. Says, mm. I'm trying, I'm trying. <laughs> Julie. I'm kidding, I'm sorry. I'm going to try that question again. Is everyone going to survive this season? I, uh, I don't know. Oh. Okay. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, oh. Whoa. Hmm. <laughs> I didn't expect you to abrupt answer that one. Okay. Um, let's go down the line of the question. What's been your favorite plot twist this season? My, my favorite plot twist this season? Or the most shocking one. One of the most shocking ones, because okay. Julie does about eight per episode. Yes. Right? That's, yeah. Um, I really, really loved it when um, Tyler turned into a hybrid and vampire. I thought that was a really great... It looked painful. Part. Yeah, it was really well done. Matt? Matt? Um, I think mine is about to come. I, the, 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 big, <laughs> the big one that I'm afraid, a big fan of is, is, is yet to come, so we'll wait and see. If I... Wow. All right. That's helpful. Nina? <laughs> yeah, well. me too, actually. No, I don't, um, it's, it is really hard to say what the favorite, I mean, every episode, there's so many, and, um, <laughs> I just did that, you just, you just ripped on my line, my Yeah, joke. but you sound like a cat meowing. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, um, oh, when Elena stabbed Rebecca. Yes. In the back. Yeah. yeah. And then when she keeps coming back and, and, cause you never saw that coming, cause Elena's so nice all the time. <laughs> Someone to hurt anybody. And then she goes and stabs someone in the back. It's awesome. Ian? Uh, well, I think we need to come back to me. I've, it's a lot. Yeah. I mean, there's, we just, by the way, I'm, I'm not even joking. We just got episode 21 of season three, which is effectively episode 65 of the Vampire Diaries. And as much as I would love to come up with some really cool, fun, like, ha, moment, I really can't. <laughs> So I will beg it, you know, I will think <clears throat> until we come back to that. Promise. <laughs> I liked that Klaus and Stefan were friends once. That was cool. I love that 
<clears throat> just that question of like, why have you taken such an interest in me? Well, it's because at one point I looked yep. at you like a brother. And I, I just thought that was great. I love that. Um, Biasedly enough, I, I feel the same way. I thought that was, I thought that was brilliant. <laughs> Played unbelievably by Stefan, the actor. Unbelievably wow. brilliant. Uh, wow. <clears throat> yeah, that was great. That was the, that was the speakeasy era was great. Um, we should do a flashback with, uh, in the 70s with Damon and Stefan. You know what? <laughs> by the way, that's what I always said. Why not the long 70s? Hair. Long hair. <laughs> like, same hair. Like front long. stage. Woodstock. Or backstage at a Rolling Stones no. concert. <laughs> Why not? In the Bahamas. What if you... <laughs> in the Bahamas. What if you're the one who killed Jim Morrison in the bathtub? Oh! Paris. Tune in. You know how Forrest Gump <laughs> was in every, show. like, major <laughs> thing? <Yeah. laughs> yeah. Like, Stefan and Damon in, like, every major <laughs> historical <laughs> event. <laughs> It should be like, Elena will be like flipping through photos of like historical events and, er and you see like Damon in the back. <laughs> Stefan's like, same haircut. <laughs> Brooding. Oh my gosh. That's pretty funny. There is a Tumblr out there of Catherine, you know, like that I, somebody tweeted at us like that Stefan, every scene that Stefan's in, Catherine's just kind of like. <laughs> yeah. It's awesome. What about you, Ooh. Caroline? Oh man. Um, I, I really loved the reveal of all of the originals together. I love, um, I love watching Klaus start to sweat, because he is. He's starting to, you know, it's, he's starting to be affected at this point. Um, I mean, uh, um, I'm saying Ian and Nina. Um, Damon and Elena, like, <laughs> macking it. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, OMG. OMG. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it's just been a roller coaster of a season. I've loved, um, you know, meeting Caroline's father and watching someone uh, go through the transition and choose not to fully transition. And um, that was so sad. Those are, that was sad. Yeah, that, that was, was sad. not a high note to put end on, but there's been a lot of great <laughs> moments. I think it's been a heck of a season, and there is so much more to come. Way to make everybody. Yeah. Oh. Way to, way to make way, everyone, everybody way to make everyone smile. <laughs> <laughs> what? He said, way to make, oh, wait, what did I say? Yeah, like, oh. <laughs> I said, my, I don't know if everyone's like, her uh, shoes. My dad dying was like, this really great. <laughs> Thank you. Great, yeah, those are Thank incredible. You. Great pants. <laughs> Thank you. Great pants. <laughs> great, I'll give them back to me. <laughs> yeah. Let's Thank you make for letting me borrow you guys are in the 70s I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm just previewing, yeah, this is the, this is for the 70s episode. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Way to make it happen. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> For the actors, have you guys ever made any suggestions to the writers that have made it into the scripts? No, we end up dead. <laughs> <laughs> no, I... I... <laughs> no, Julia welcomes opinions. I yeah, they like... never end up on the page. No, it's not true. It's not true. Wait, I, 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 I don't know if it was, it was inevitable or what, but I was, in season two, remember, I was like, sat you and Kevin down, and I was like, can we please make Stefan dark? And then you were like... Yeah, but that was And already... I was like, oh my God, that's totally what we're doing. Yeah, already. right. <laughs> <laughs> wow, Paul, how cool. No, we're that in sync. We're, no, that's the thing. I think that the way these guys tune into their characters, they get... They get a sense as actors and the rhythm when the characters' behaviors are starting to feel stale or, or, or not, uh, not surprising. And we like to, as writers, pride ourselves on always kind of being right there so that we're making changes and making decisions for the characters just as the actor themselves is starting to feel a little bit like constrained or as the fan base is starting to feel a little bit tired by it. Um, I always notice, you know, we're always like five or six or seven episodes ahead, and I can always track in the, the social media feedback just when somebody's starting to complain really loudly about a storyline. I'm always like, hee hee hee, because I know that we've already <laughs> we've already made the turn and we're already going in the direction that the fans are clamoring for. Um, they don't know that, but that we uh, that's we like to feel in sync with everybody like that. So. Do the fans ever influence the direction? Uh, you know, I'll tell you, it's hard. It's hard to shut out that and, and not take some of that into consideration because it's, it's loud, you know? And I mean that respectfully and beautifully. It's beautifully loud. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's like you also have Seriously. to... Seriously. 
you have to try to be true to character all the time. And, uh, and there's obviously been, you know, certain moments where we sit in the writer's room and we say, oh, we can't do that, because boy, will that piss somebody off. And, and then, but then we talk about it and we say, no, 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 let's not make decisions based on, based on satisfying you know, everyone. Satisfying everyone. Let's be true to our, the core of our theme, the core of our characters, and the journey that they're on. You have to be controversial to certain groups in order to... Yeah, I mean, with the, you know... When Basically, I, you have to piss people off to make yeah. it good. It's well, true. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when we all get, like, you'll get, you'll get the criticism every now and then, and, and, and someone will say, the fact that somebody is so angry about what it is that, that you guys are doing means they care that much to be angry. And that is its own badge of honor that is pretty phenomenal. And um, I think one of the reasons why the show has had the success it's had is because the fan community is that invested. So it's, pr it's pretty awesome. And that amazing. And that amazing, Basically. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That's all we get for you, like being awesome. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Cool. There you go. So I have one more question, then I'm gonna open it up to the audience for Q&As. Just wanna remind everybody uh -oh. to wait for the mics, please. Um, uh -oh. But so get your questions ready. Um, so, are we going to find out more about the death of Elena's parents? Whoa! Whoa. Hello! Now you know what it's like! How do you like it? Um, nice. Are we going to find out more about the death of Elena's parents? Um, we are, we don't know, we're, we're talking about, we're talking about having um, a flashback as we get to the end of the season that shows us Elena's life uh, as before she had vampires in it. And that would involve her parents, obviously. Um, so, uh, but it's not written yet, so we'll see. All right, we're looking forward to that. But I think it'd be nice to see. Okay. All right, um, so raise your hand. All right, just a reminder to everybody on the live stream universe that, you know, when you, as you guys ask questions, that there are things that you've seen. That circle of trust. <laughs> <laughs> really big circle of trust. <laughs> circle of trust. <laughs> um, Oh, wait for the mic, and stand up and please ask your question. Hello. Um, I was Hello. wondering, um, will we ever see Bonnie with someone who's decent that isn't going to die at all? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, you will. You will. <laughs> I love the Bonnie fans. You guys are everything. So thank you for being so invested in her and, and her love life and shipping her with everyone. Even if they don't make sense, they're like, they don't care. Ship her. Um, so yes, yes, you will. They meet on Match.com. It's not a big deal. Which Match.com? Which Which Mitch Match? Which Mitch Match.com? Watch. I actually like that. Next question. Um, I was just wondering, do you like playing Catherine or Elena more? And what one do you find more challenging? I, I mean, I think it's very similar to what Paul was saying about Stefan being dark and good. And it just it depends on kind of the day. And, and if you do one more than the other, you kind of you're itching to do the other one. So um, there's always challenges every day when we're on set whether it's because an emotional scene or a comedy sometimes or whatever the character's going through, it, there's always gonna be challenges, but um, I think the challenge is keeping it fresh and, and keeping it, um, like to, to make sure that you're, that it's as exciting and that you are just as, as excited about it and like, like making Catherine fun and different than Elena and vice versa, like making Elena lovable but not more so than Catherine. Like for me, that's a challenge to make them both lovable and hateable and killable and just like, <laughs> like making them into all these exciting, different layered people that. All the ables. Yeah. Yeah. Basically, like making them exciting and different. Go ahead. Uh, my question's for Julie. Uh, I've said it many times that this is one of the best written shows on TV. It moves so fast. You can never see what's coming. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the process you guys go about breaking an episode and the season? 
Uh, yes, yes, it's horrible. Um, <laughs> first of all, yeah, let's first of not all, get Kevin... her head bigger than it already is. <laughs> yeah, first of all, I'm a horrible egomaniac and that just ruined me forever. Now, um, <laughs> and let me give a shout out. Kevin swore he was watching on live stream from Atlanta where he is right now. Kevin so, Williamson! Kevin, Kevin Williamson! If you are watching, we love you. bow down. Um, and, and I think most of the writing staff is actually here in the audience and uh, they can attest to right. the horribleness. Well done <laughs> of the process. There they are. There they are. Where? Hi, Brian. Which is oh, essentially we start every episode with a blank whiteboard and no formula and no <laughs> procedural elements and no franchise elements. And essentially every episode is its own new movie and we do it. Um, we do 22 over the span of seven months and we immerse ourselves completely uh, into trying to decide what's the next move emotionally for all these characters. We usually start there. We start with what's the best emotional move. And then what's the next move in our mythology? Uh, and then how can we thematically link those things together so that they organically feed off of each other. And then we come up with our fabulous Mystic Falls, very special event with a capital E, um, <laughs> which, you know, I'll tell you is, is kind of a joke, but also it, it's just from a storytelling point of view is crucial to our show because more often than not, it is the, the central uh, element that brings all of our characters together and can link all the stories together so that the episode feels like a movie with the beginning, middle, and an end. So while we share the joke and we share the laugh about, you know, oh, this week is the ball at the whatever and next week is the great chili cook-off <laughs> shrimp fest, you know, um, it, it actually gives, it, it makes the show feel like you, you're tuning into a movie each week as opposed to just an endless serialized mass of, of, of nothing. So um, that's the process. Thank you for that question. First of all, Ian, Paul, you guys are gorgeous. Well done. <laughs> well done. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Mom, Dad. Oh, yeah. <laughs> really, thank you. Um, <laughs> I've worked years perfecting this. <laughs> You've done a great job. Thank you. Okay. So my question is to Julie. Do you think that the two brothers are ever going to like be friends and not hate each other? Oh, God, I hope so. Uh, you know, if, if, if I... If I've said out loud and you know, kill me for it, that that the brothers' relationship is the is the epic love story of this series, then for them to never actually um, have that be uh, requited would be would be really sad. So I'm I'm hoping that as on a brother level, season 14. <laughs> yeah. Damon and Stefan go to dinner. I mean, I think <laughs> Stefan has a little too much wine. <laughs> The casting couch comes out. And then they no. cuddle. I'm starting to understand what the casting couch is. <laughs> but I also think that, you know, this episode is a perfect example of, of something I was talking to the boys about recently, which is, you know, Damon, Damon's struggling with the villain inside, but he's being a good boy and they're a bad boy, and Stefan's being a good boy or a bad boy, and they're, they're alternating villainry, but right now, where we are in the series, in spite of the love triangle of it all, the brothers are trying to be heroes to each other, and that is where we are, and, um, and I hope that we can keep them that way for a little while. Do you know what's we interesting? To Not to, yeah. sorry. <laughs> Nobody asked me anything, but I'm just... <laughs> I mean, Gee, Paul, tell sense. us. What's interesting? Uh, no, I was just thinking that it's kind of interesting that I think that there's a camaraderie in the fact that they're both in love with the same girl. Yes, because Twice. they know what each other's going through, you yeah. know? It's like, you know, I mean, I, I, think the, I think the worst cliche is letting, letting a girl tear two people apart. I think the smarter path is watching how in spite of the conflict of that girl, how can it still bring two people together? And, um, and that's wow. where we are right now with them. Interesting. I think she's setting you guys up. I don't know when that's gonna happen, but. So. <laughs> oh, sorry. Oh. <laughs> um, I'm gonna embarrass my best friend right here. It's her birthday. Woo! Happy birthday, Happy Claire. Birthday. Happy birthday. Sorry, you're wasting your birthday with us. <laughs> <laughs> She's very happy. 
Um, I guess if I could take a moment to separate ourselves from the television show, because we are fans and we love the show, I think there's a very unique thing kind of happening in your own lives, being having the ability to be a part of this show. And I was, just, I mean, you guys, there's so many people here. I, I guess I'm just kind of curious, when you take yourself back through all the auditions, through all the moms and dads driving you, to all of that commitment, and you finally are on a pedestal, you're kind of on this element where you are gonna have some unique opportunities happen because of the success of the show. I'm just curious if you wouldn't mind talking a little bit maybe about some of that experience, some of the no's that you had, some of the yeses that you had, and maybe you can connect with some of the audience today who might be aspiring actors or, <laughs> or, or maybe, Julie, you wouldn't mind addressing for those of us who don't necessarily want to be faces of television, but who are interested in being the creative aspect of a TV show. What could you tell us, being in the city of Angels, in the city of Los Angeles, trying so hard to do what what y'all have been able to accomplish. How could you answer that question? That was wow. such a good I know, question. That was, yeah. that was, that was a great question. Thank you. First you of must all, be a writer. This is <laughs> not a pedestal. This is a really uncomfortable small director's chair. Yeah. I, just <laughs> I think this question was designed for you. Dude. I think it was designed for all y'all, but I'll answer it first just because you just All y'all. All y'all. You've, you've been in Atlanta too long, girl. Um, <laughs> Yeah. I think that, uh, you know, actually it was Zach Roerig said this the other day. So I'm actually talking about the actor's experience more than the writer's, so, sorry. But he said, you know, like the greatest thing about all this is that in 20, 30, 40 years when people talk about television, talk about this era, they'll talk about Twilight, they'll talk about True Blood, they'll talk about the vampire era, the, the, the explosion of the vampire zeitgeist, and they will always talk about this show as being part of that and being a successful part of that. And, and he said, and I will always be that guy that got to be a part of that. And, and, and I, it was so sweet, Zach, when he said it. And I just, you know, his little blue eyes. Um, but <laughs> I think that, you know, eyes. I think that speaking for everybody, the opportunity to do this is such a dream come true, obviously. Um, it can happen after like a long, long hard road right. or it can happen in an instant. Yeah. And um, everybody's experience is different. It's like the proverbial discovered at the mall versus you're 45, you've been at it for 25 years and somebody finally says, hey, I like what you do. Um, but you never take it for granted because it doesn't really happen very often. Success doesn't happen very often and multiple success doesn't happen very often. So we just, are very incredibly grateful to be part of that. So it's, Candace and Paul. Yeah, a lot of it's, a, I mean, I would think the pilot world in general is a, is a lot of it is a fluke, I think, you yeah. know? Even if something's good, if it doesn't, you know, test well or something, it doesn't go, and then it doesn't find an audience and this, that. It's such a, uh, for talking about television, I feel like it's such an arbitrary kind of thing, and I, I feel like you just sort of have to sit at a blackjack table and hit 21 eventually or something. I don't know. Yeah. You know, there's a very interesting thing, um, and it's an old adage, but the idea that luck is when opportunity meets preparation. Yeah. Nice. Luck does not <laughs> just fall in your lap. Right. An, op uh, an opportunity can come at you and if you were not prepared for, to take advantage of that opportunity, it's essentially never going to happen. Right. So by virtue of that, it's a very strange thing because this aspect of whether it's writing, directing, producing, acting, this entire business, life in general, is a lot about when you are prepared to accept the opportunity that's given to you. Conversely, if, can you be prepared and never have any luck? You know, yeah. there are a lot of people that that is, are, you may, that may <laughs> But that is where positivity comes in. <laughs> right. I think yeah, that exactly. That is a very big part. Um, like how I went immediately. No. <laughs> but I, I, my, but I, my, my dad always told me, um, no doesn't mean never, it means not yet. And so with all the no's <laughs> that came a lot of the time, um, it, it's good to see, you know, just to keep working and better yourself and the more opportunities, the more opportunities for yes and just to see the light and know that it always works so out. The single most important thing is to believe in yourself. Yes. I really believe it's a single. Even when no one else does because the amount of rejection yeah. uh, that happens, actually, you want to hear about rejection, the first time, uh, yes, Julie rejected me once. It was awful, but we made amends. No. Aww. Um and Julie was there for this, and it was really brutal, her and Kevin oh, yeah. <clears throat> as well. 
You know, the process of booking a television show is an extensively nerve-wracking, nail-biting, awful experience. Do not kid yourself. You can believe in yourself so much. When you re realize you want something in life, it becomes, the stakes are raised. It becomes very difficult to differentiate between whether you are worthy of this or you aren't. You just have to do what you do as best as you can. Namely so, I knew this was my role. I wanted this role. I knew I could do it. You go through a series of testing. You know, you meet the directors and the producers and the writers, and then they go through a testing phase, and then you get an offer, and then you go test for the studio, which would have been Warner Brothers, and then you test for the network. And at the end of that network test, if they want you, then you get the job. You can pass the studio, or you can not pass the studio. You'll never make it to the network. I passed the studio, got to the network, and whether it was too much coffee or that B12 shot that I gave myself, whatever it was, I choked in the network test. And I bombed it. And the first take of the network test, first of all, you're in a theater where you say a word and it doesn't move. It's this like vacuum of a room. And I finished the first take of it and I walked, out. no, Kevin Williamson goes, <laughs> like walk outside. So I walked outside and Kevin Williamson walks out and he goes, yeah. That wasn't good, wasn't it? <laughs> that was and not good. And half the time, they don't even say that. So you no, know, but, but Kevin, you're lucky, man. Time. No, exactly, but Kevin wanted this to happen. And he said, that was not good, was it? And I said, no, it wasn't. <laughs> and he said, just go back and do what you did at the studio. Go back and do what you know you need to do. And I did. And it necessarily, and I'll make this really quick, and it necessarily, I did what I thought I needed to do. I left feeling awful. And guess what? It wasn't good enough. And I had to go back and retest because the head of, you know, our, all, our big boss, Les Moonves, did not buy it, the fact that I was Damon. And I wanted to jump off of a building. <laughs> and you know what? I went back there and I realized, and there was some other guy in the room, I don't remember what he was doing, something distracting. He was like singing while reading a book, trying to be really cool. <laughs> and I said, you know what? Screw this. This, no. This is mine, this is not his. And I went in and did it, and oddly enough, ended up getting the call. But it was not after 10 days of virtual hell. And you don't always win, but every time you lose, you get better. Yep. And that is... <laughs> brutal. Uh, I would add to your question, uh, the, the, where do you find yourself when you're on the third season of, of, of a really popular, wonderful show? Where do you go? What do you do? How, what was the experience like? And, and for me, it's been interesting growing with everyone here. You know, we've come together, we found ourselves in, a, in a, an extremely rare and precious circumstance, and you're living your life, and you're living a character's life, and you're, you're in a creative collaboration, and it's, and, it's, and it's an up and down experience, but it really forges you together, and it bonds you, and we've had all these amazing life experiences together, and, and I think the joy for me is imagining <clears throat> where everyone's going to go after the show, what everyone's going to do next, because I think everyone is so tremendous and so talented. And, and it's been such a joy working with everyone. And it is a wonderful opportunity that we all have. And I hope that we do the best that we can to, to make the most out of it. And hopefully that won't be for a while. Yeah, exactly. Right? Exactly. A few more years. Yeah. If we can pull it off. You in the first row. So thank you all for being you. We love you. Thank um, you. Kat sings like an angel, and we know this already. Having heard some yes. of her songs. Looks can be and we know that many mm. scenes of the show take place in the local bar. Are we going to have a drunken karaoke night at some point in time in the future and get to hear the rest of you? Yes. yes. I, w I would love a drunken karaoke night on the show. <laughs> it's a hard, you know, I, I mean, I would say that once more with feeling that the Buffy musical episode. <laughs> Favorite, favorite thing in the world. Um, I, you know, I don't know that our show could sustain that kind of um, tone shift to be able to do a musical episode as no much way. as my fantasies. <laughs> I would love to. Um, but the, but to, to be able to, you know, 
showcase the gifts and the talents of people like Candace and the Pat girls are singers. the girls are all singers. Everybody, all I mean, freaking David I mean, Anders was on set with his bongos and singing <laughs> from Miss Saigon all the time. Like he's talented too. Yeah. Everybody's got a pretty special gift, so maybe good, maybe. Oh my gosh, can you imagine that? <laughs> all right, we've got time for one last question. Go ahead. Um, sorry, I'm nervous. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. Go ahead. Me too. Hey, we're in the same boat. Baby. We're terrified. You are all wonderful, by the way. Um, growing up as a little 15-year-old, I read these wonderful books <laughs> that the show, you know, the, the the they're named for. Obviously, the show's very different, and Make it's them. awesome. <laughs> Loved it. Love it. Love it. Um, in the books. Things happen most, and forgive me if you've already had this question, but I just I'm curious for my own sake. Elena turns into a vampire in the books, and I know that's probably not going to happen on the show. I'm just curious if you if you've like explored that, if that's a possibility, or if you're like hell no. <laughs> we, we and said, yeah, said, I love. I you, think by we the said way. when we when we got when we Kevin and I got the job basically to do this show. We said, by the way, do you guys know that the like heroine turns into a vampire at the end of like book one, and then <laughs> and then at the end of book two she's dead, mm -hmm. and then I think she's an angel. Like right, we were yeah. like, so is it cool if we take a little license with that journey? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and and they said yes, and and they allowed us to take those licenses. So I, the answer is we'll see. I mean, it's there's a, a wealth of of stories that have been given to us from those books. There's things that we've decided to do and things that we've said maybe not for us and um, so I would say I don't know thank you thank you thank you well thank you thanks all for your so courage much for coming. and thank you to the cast